Hey everyone, I wanted to do a video today um, talking a little bit about where we are with Scientific Connection through Inquiry. We're doing level three. I did another video where I talked through uh, the first two weeks of the curriculum and in this video I'm going to talk about I think weeks three through seven. So the other video I did, I did the first two weeks that was cells and then this video we finished cells and then we finished flight. So I'm just going to kind of talk to you a little bit about what we did in general. Um, we're liking it. I do feel a little awkward, a little clunky in presenting it. I haven't quite figured that out yet for me to feel like it goes smoothly. Um, and I also feel like a lot of the sessions are, like there could be more to them or you could combine them maybe. Um, but this is one of those curriculums where we are just gonna see it through. We're gonna trust the process and see where we are at the end. Um, so we had a uh, week three was finishing up cells. So we had animal cells versus plant cells. And then we had cell theory and cell size. And so again, I pretty much just do what they say to do. So we observed some plant and animal cells in, um, we looked at their drawings that they had made of plant and animal cells in a previous, um, lesson like in their notebooks and then I also because I didn't feel like that was quite clear enough um, I pulled out this book that we had mammoth science and I turned to the page on cells we have an animal cell animal cells plant cell plant cells and we just talked about the differences mostly being the structure of the cell wall so that book was helpful to have um, and then they had an activity page that they had to do in their notebooks where they um, identified um, animal cells and plant cells. And so we did that. And that was pretty much it for this um, lesson. We just talked through the effects of having a cell wall, why they're different between animal cells and plant cells. Um, so that was pretty much it. And then session four was cell theory and cell size. This one I felt extra clunky. Um, I feel like I didn't have, I don't know. It just, I wasn't as comfortable with this one. Um, but we got through it. Again, I just kind of go through. I don't read this to them, but I do paraphrase parts of it to them. And I try to guide the conversation based on how they say to guide the conversation. And then um, we actually reread a book that we used earlier, I believe we used this earlier, um, in the unit, which is Greg's Microscope. This is a really old book, and it's a little, you know, a little bit young, but um, this one, he actually looks at grains of salt um, and sugar under the microscope somewhere, oh yeah, somewhere in here, which made my kids really want to do that, which was perfect because um, that's kind of what this is relating to, um, and what, um, what it asks you to do here. So we did that and talked about the different levels of magnification and how that can make each the same object look differently based on the level of magnification you're using. So that was good. That was done. This is the wrap up of all the things that they should be able to do and understand, and I think they do. Next, we moved on to flight. Um, again, this was really long. I think it was um, weeks, four or five, six, four weeks, I think. And I just felt like it didn't need to be that long. Um, but anyway, the very first session was about gravity. And I feel like, I don't even think we did much in here. Um, I don't think I added anything to this session. We just, I asked them the question and um, yeah, we talked through this. They did a couple demonstrations kind of on their own um, for here. And yeah, we kind of went into this about how things fly. And that was pretty much it. One book, I added in several books to this uh, unit. One book I read to them after that was Ada Twist Scientist, The Y Files. Exploring Flight. This is young, especially for my sixth grader, but it still has a lot of really good information in it. So, and my son actually, I think, read this last year 
but he didn't remember all of it. So we did reread this. Um, it does have some really good information in it about the forces of flight. Um, and it has helicopters, planes, birds, kites, hot air balloons. Um, it has a little section on all of those. So that was perfect. We were able to revisit the one on kites um, when we did the section on kites. Now, here they have you building a kite. We did, chose not to build a kite. Um, and it does say you can just use a pre-made kite. That's what we did. We already had um, some kites that we had never used. So we did not build a kite. We went straight into um, flying our kite. Um, and I think, yeah. So they had a workbook page they had to do with um, what kites need to fly. I will say this was kind of a fail on the day we went to do it. There wasn't enough of a breeze. It was frustrating. We tried to then use a fan, which was also frustrating. And we ended up just having to try another day. But anyway, there was a workbook page that they had to do about what kites need to fly. And that was pretty much that session. The next session was about flying forces, what forces allow a kite to fly. And um, there was uh, a page in their activity book where they, I'm probably gonna lose my battery, um, where they labeled kind of the forces that help a kite fly. And yeah, that was pretty much that. Oh, and then they also did this little page in their activity book about how kites fly. I didn't add anything else into this one, I don't think. We just looked at the kite section in here again. The next one is on airplanes and helicopters. Again, we revisited what was in here after doing kind of this talk through. I try not to introduce any additional books until we've kind of made our observations and things like that. Um, there was another page in the student um, notebook for helicopters and airplanes. We had a section in this mammoth science that I thought was really good that we looked at. Um, but can I find it now when my battery's about to die? Let's see. Here we go. So this was a nice little spread on flight. I like that it had helicopter. Um, so we just kind of sat and read through this together. Um, one of the books that the curriculum recommended as like an additional read was The Science of Flight. We did read a couple of pages out of here. We didn't read the whole thing, but I did like this had a section, I believe, on, yeah, on spinning blades, on helicopters, and some information about the forces of flight. So uh, we did use those. And then this lesson, session six, was probably my kid's favorite. Again, we kind of worked through what it said. We made a paper airplane model. That's why they liked it. They tested it the way they told them to test it by bending the ends. That worked, so they were really excited. It's always exciting when an experiment works. Um, I used little bits from this book, this Explore Flight by Nomad Press. Um, but there's a lot of extra stuff in here. But I read a couple of little excerpts um, from here for our last couple of sessions. Um, and then this was an add-on I got that was probably my favorite. It's folding paper airplanes with STEM. And what I like is it's got some great airplane models, but also there is information on each page about kind of the science of flight. Um reinforcing kind of the things that we've been learning. So this to me was a really helpful add-on and I'm glad that we added on. I think it was really necessary. And then the last session gets into flight and nature. Again, we just worked through here. We did the little experiment that it had us do. Um, we watched the video. Some of these had videos. I think I forgot to point that out. If there was a video, we watched it. And then this was a book that they recommended, Birds, Nature's Magnificent Flying Machines. So we did read, we didn't read the whole thing, but we read um, bits and pieces of this book. And then another book that I added on that was kind of just a fun add-on was this Invented by Animals, Meet the Creatures Who Inspired Everyday Technology. And there were a couple in here about um, flight. Uh, let's see now if I can find them. Probably not. 
Oh, Controlling Flight, The Dragonfly. That was kind of a fun read because we talked about a dragonfly. And there was another one here, The Art of Flying. So this was a fun add-on. Um, I really am glad that we added these on. This, I could take it or leave it. We had it, which is why I chose to add it in. I really enjoyed the um, picture in there. And then this was a really good add-on as well. So we finished flight and that was the wrap up. I forgot to say, when we finished um, cells, we also tied it in with, we drew a plant cell and they did some chlorophyll um, coloring with leaves. We talked about the chloroplasts um, in their plant cell. So that was tied into the cell unit. I forgot to mention that um, earlier. We did add that in kind of separately um, to tie in kind of with the season here. So that's pretty much it. We're still liking it. There's some things that I'm kind of eh about, um, but we're doing it and, you know, they're enjoying it. It's not overwhelming and I feel like they're learning. So all in all, that's how weeks three through seven looked. If you'd like me to keep doing these, let me know. I'll try to maybe not do so many weeks together at a time, but that's just how our life worked um, this time. So um, yeah, so the books we added in, Greg's Microscope, Ada Twist, Scientist Exploring Flight. We used this Mammoth Science in both units. We used a little bit from that. This was probably the standout. This was a fun add-in. And then these two were ones that the curriculum recommended that I felt were worthy of borrowing from the library. So if you have any questions, let me know down below and I will see you in the next video.